Hi. Well, today we're headed out to Aveiro. And I always think of it as like the Portuguese um, version of Venice. You know, because it's got the canal and the, uh, the gondolas. Well, they're kind of um, fishing boats. But anyway, they're kind of like gondolas. And so that's where we're headed. And it's right on the coast. So that's kind of nice. There are some nice beaches and um, it's actually a very popular place. We don't really go there very often um, because it's a little too popular for us. We prefer things that are a little, you know, are a little bit more out of the way and um, not so many people. So anyway, here we go. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Linny. <laughs> there she is. There she is in the background. coastal area of Aveiro and um, haven't really been here in many many years so I don't even recognize it. I think it. it's um, had, it's been so built up in the past 15-20 years probably that it's difficult to recognize compared to when I was here a long time ago. Become more like a city, really, just around this coastal area. We're just trying to find the beach for the moment. <laughs> There was a sign back there and now we don't see it anymore. So we're here in Arvedo, coastal area, <clears throat> and the beaches are somewhere around. Well, I mean, there are sand dunes over there, so obviously the ocean's over there. But there was a sign that said Praias, which means beaches, but then it just sort of disappeared. You know, no more signs after that. So let's see. Atlantic sea, rough day, kind of, it's not too bad. The weather's actually quite nice. There's the lighthouse in the distance. I'm not sure it's going to show up on the video. very built up, isn't it? It is. But it's, um, some of the houses here, the architecture is, even though it's modern, some of it's actually nicer than uh, places like Mira, where they haven't done a very good job. They've made it look a little more quaint here, the way they've built these beach houses and stuff.
it's actually quite a large area so it's easier to just drive through and just film some of it and this uh, isn't particularly attractive anymore but at least not to me but some people obviously like it I'm sure it's comfortable these apartments are probably quite comfortable I expect quite a few of them are for rent or uh, tourism we're coming closer to the beach area now shops here. Oh, there's the lighthouse. Okay, now that's a little more interesting. There's the lighthouse. And once again, I have no idea if this is just a historical landmark now or if it's in use still. I don't know. That's something that I have no idea about. There's all these little shops and things, cafes around here. Not too many shops. around looking for parking <laughs> it's always a challenge it's not busy this time of year here by the looks of things it's like a it really is like a small city going there or something. Mm, yeah in there left sure. I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure if we can park here but it doesn't say anything so it looks like it's probably okay <laughs> Okay, we're heading towards another entrance to a beach and so this is just more built up areas it's so built up it's incredible i'm just amazed <laughs> how these places change they kind of i have i hate to say it but they kind of lose their charm and they build too much making thing. Um, one thing I miss about <coughs> England, some of these coastal areas, are all the fascinating little quaint businesses and craft shops and things like that. The little tea shops with all kinds of different foods and snacks and uh, different kinds of teas and you know, coffees and things. I miss that creativity. I don't find that so much in Portugal. It's pretty much uniform in terms of little shops and things. They're pretty much the same wherever you go. Mostly, it seems. There's a boat out there. Is that a fishing boat? It's locked. Don't ask me why, since there are quite a few people wandering around. Here are the usual junk food choice places. Hot dogs, sandwiches and so on. We just thought we'd come here and just see how it is. Um, <laughs> sweet. But again, you know, it's uh, we're more into the natural aspects of these places, the ocean. But we just thought we'd film the area, just give a bit of information on what it looks like. Uh, souvenir shop, 
Uh, mostly things made in China. But plastic stuff. Nothing locally made, I doubt. Be nice to see some local artisans selling their stuff in these little shops. Still some nice little old houses around. Now here's an interesting building. And it's all along this area here where all these other otherwise not too great buildings are. Looks like it's a chapel. But look at that. Nice designs. There's a little angel. It's kind of right here. Stuck in between all this stuff. Opposite side, there's the lighthouse up there. Well, we're now headed towards Avedo city center, away from this area here on the coast. So it's quite a, it's a large area, this whole coastal area here. It just feels big. I don't, still don't know exactly in which direction the um, more popular beach I have a feeling in the summer this gets extremely busy. Just imagine. Beaches, restaurants, everything's probably full. But um, it's not really our kind of thing, so I doubt we're going to be coming here in the summer. Anyway, this is Aveiro city on a U-turn, I mean, well, kind of, roundabout. Well, we're here in the center near the canal area in uh, Alvedo, and it's kind of raining now. <laughs> Just noticed this cute house, cute old house there, and some of these older streets and then we're just walking down towards this like a central plaza area or something I guess but it's kind of raining just notice that kind of bright rather pretty uplifting building there Royal School of Languages that's kind of nice since I love architecture. Okay, this is the canal. You can see the boats, gondola type things, whatever they are. Kind of going by. Okay, here we go. Here are some of the nice ships. This is more like it, isn't it? This really beats the uh, modernized coastal area. See, look at these boats, traditional boats. It's kind of a nice way to put them to use here. I don't know if they use them for tourism. I'm assuming they do. Um, yeah, it looks like they do. There's some kids over there, group of kids or tourists or whatever, going out. And it's raining because they've got their umbrellas. There's some. Uh, little shops over there I don't know if it's anything interesting quite frankly <clears throat> a lot of it is just cheap sort of tourist things that are really not particularly original but you might find some little gems here and there if you walk around look around especially if it's you know family-run businesses you can walk a little bit further along here but anyway, this is definitely more our kind of thing because this is more unique to Portugal, you know? This is more of a, something that, that you remember and that's unique, not the same as everywhere else. It's kind of the main, one of the main streets that runs through here. Looks like you, yeah, looks like you pay 
for your boat ride over there. And I wonder where it takes you. I have no idea how much it costs. It's probably not too bad though. Generally, these things in Portugal are not that expensive yet. Some nice wall art over there. Murals. I don't know what that is, that building. Maybe it's just this. Maybe it's just some old steps they've decided to paint or something. Mm. Nice little plaza area there. Is that a football hooligan? group or something? I don't know. Sounds very tribal. This kind of reminds me more of Germany and uh, Switzerland maybe. In fact that building over there is kind of modern isn't it? That looks almost Germanic doesn't it? Is it apartments? I don't know. No, something else. So here we are, central Aveiro city. Well, it's not a bad city, the central area anyway. This is kind of interesting. It's got some little interesting shops. bunch of other tourists. No, oh, that's not modern, that building. That's actually quite old. It's like a kind of Venice of Portugal. But it's pretty. Interesting. Quirky buildings. Um, Some, I see some interesting little shops selling cute things. So it's 13 euros, I believe, to go on these uh, gondola type things, boats, whatever you call them. But they are kind of designed to look like the old Portuguese fishing boats. There's a cute bridge over there, and it's supposed to be a lover's bridge or something. It's adorned with ribbons and things. See that bridge over there? That's the bridge. It's supposed to be some kind of lover's bridge. Is that it? What is it? What's it called? I don't know the story behind it. Again, that's something that anyone who knows you can probably put down in the comments, please. Because <laughs> we are not historians. We don't have time to be reading up in detail about it. We just like to make the videos do the best we can to share information. More like giving, giving people a feeling for a place rather than delving too much into historical facts. That's kind of interesting area. Of course, is the token graffiti spoiling it. So, what's the story behind this stuff then? Is this it? All of this? So, this whole area is this lovers thing? Yeah, I think so. Oh, wow. I don't know if there's an actual story behind this. Yeah. I don't know if there's an actual story to this that's, you know, some based on some historical tradition or whether it's just something that's been made up for tourism. Oh, it looks like those boats make a noise. Anyway, it's like a little shopping area here that's modern but kind of nice. They've done a nice job actually, for the most part. Good. 
problem with some of these places now is they have all these boutique kind of stores that are way overpriced and still don't sell anything particularly interesting. Unique, I should say. So we did eventually find toilets, very, very tiny little signs. And they're in the Forum Shopping Center here, which is another manifestation of this uh, Forum in Coimbra. There's one here too, shopping mall. We also can't find anything um, reasonably healthy to eat in there. There is a food court, but it's not really much choice for people who want health foods or vegetarian food quality. But anyway, if you just want to, if you don't care and you just want to grab something quick, then that's the place to go, right in there, the forum. McDonald's, everything. <laughs> Usual. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so we're headed back now to the car, going past the canal again. Because it's rainy, I guess the uh, gondolas are kind of retired a little bit today. Not too many tourists to take around. It looks like a playground thing there, doesn't it? For the kids. Yeah, it's kind of a nice mosaic sort of effect. I like that. And there are these shops along here. That one's just some of them look kind of interesting but then they don't sell anything that interesting this one is uh, they specialize in cod fish cakes okay, which is a Portuguese speciality and that's kind of nice at least it's something unique to Portugal but it's different from what everybody else is doing I've never seen that before most other places are the bakeries and they just sell all the same cakes everywhere and it's all just all the same wherever you go. Same tiny cups of tea. Look at that. Oh, now these are houses that I believe are, they're like old Catholic houses that help the poor, the sick. This one in Cantanied as well, close to where we were staying. Another dignitary up there. I like some of the artistry along these little walls here. This is cute. It's really nice when cities make the effort to do these things. art there going up the steps nice just nice when people make an effort isn't it create something unique oh there's toilets there oh my god look at that toilets unbelievable <laughs> hidden away there with no sign anywhere <laughs> unless you're right on it and you happen to walk past it there's another mural here the fishing industry Kind of a more cute little shop, little crystals and things. The artisan, ethnic artisan shop, that's cute. But anyway, this is what I mean by just sweet little stores, more artistic things there. So some of these little back streets have um, perhaps more potential for some of these more original little stores. 
like down there, for example. I don't know what that is. But I'm thinking it's because most of the little family businesses can no longer afford to be in the main drag areas that cost too much to rent space. So, uh, so perhaps it's actually worthwhile just kind of walking away from the main areas and just exploring some of these little back roads because um, you're not going to find anything original in the malls for the most part. It's all the same old, same old that you find anywhere else in the world, probably. Here we are, going down to the parking lot. Well, we had a nice walk in um, Avedo uh, Center, city center, where the, you know, those gondolas are and all this kind of stuff. But we, the main problem was finding parking and this is in March and even then it's, it was quite difficult. So we had to go to that underground parking. Now getting out of there was an absolute nightmare. I do not recommend it. Um, we had to, we had the ticket, the parking ticket and we thought we would just scan it and it will tell you how much, you know, it tells you how much you've got to pay. But you do not pay at that machine there. You've got to get out of your car, you've got to go back into the booth and you've got to pay there for some reason, but there's nobody nobody there. And you have to, you can't pay with coins, you've got to pay with a card. And what's even worse is we had these two people in behind us waiting in their cars for us to figure that out. And they were just really rude, obnoxious. Um, one of them even, you know, came over, scanned my ticket, you know, whatever, and then she threw it in the car at me. And uh, <laughs> now I will say, I have traveled around the world. These people have not, and they don't know what they're talking about. It is not normal for something to be that complicated when it comes to paying for your parking ticket when you're, you know, leaving the underground parking or whatever it is. So don't tell me it's normal because it isn't. <laughs> but anyway, um, don't, uh, if you, unless you want to go through that, it's probably best to just find street parking if you can, or just park a little bit outside of the city and walk in if it's a nice day. Save yourself the stress and, you know, people honking at you and getting impatient because you don't know that you're not supposed to pay there at the machine and you've got to get out of your car and go back and find and pay at the booth and this and that. So, <laughs> word of warning there. 